Hey YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> make uh, some paddles, kind of like this one. But I'm making it for uh, an association that I belong to. So I'm going to go ahead and make those paddles and take you in a step-by-step -step, uh, with paracord, obviously on the handles. And so that way you can see how it's done. Okay, you can see I've got a couple paddles down here. I'm going to be doing several paddles, uh, probably close to about seven or eight of them. And you can see the paddles I've got down there right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, tape, uh, just regular this uh, painter's tape and a pencil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be t putting tape on this area right here. So that way I can go ahead and trace around the coin. Um, this coin happens to be uh, the association I belong to. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it, place it there, and then go ahead and use my knife to go ahead and cut around the initial tracing. And then I'll be using a Dremel, different bit of course, but I'll be using a Dremel to go ahead and grind out the area that I don't want. The tools that I'll be using are called FIDs to weave the paracord between each other. Now, weaving the cord between each other, you really need a tool like this because it gets pretty dang tight in there. The way I put the paracord into the FID is I cut it at a 45 degree angle. You can see in the picture here, not only do I cut it at a 45 degree angle with the scissors, but I will also, which you don't see, I'll also pass that fresh cut through the blue part of a flame. I use a big lighter. I will pass that paracord through there. Once it starts to melt, I pull the paracord out of the flame and I roll it between my fingers. Yeah, it's hot, but that's the way I do it. What you're looking at here is the paddle in the middle, the paracord that I'm using on the top of the screen, and then on the bottom of the screen, you see some end nips, needle nose. Once again, you see my fids and that coil. That's a really light bailing wire. Why do I use that? Because I don't have a third hand and sometimes you just gotta hold something there. What you see here is the paddle already wrapped around the handle, already wrapped with the blue paracord. That's my base color. The way I attached it was I stapled it. Yeah, it's cheap, it's easy. If I need to move it around, it's a lot easier than removing a tack if I tacked it in. I used roughly about 33 feet of this blue paracord on a 30 inch paddle.
Okay, now what you're looking at are some yellow sections of the paracord. I've cut them at two and a half foot long. Bare minimum, cut them two foot. I like to cut them at two and a half foot. What you're seeing is that I will lace it through the base paracord or the blue paracord. I'll go under three strands. I'll go over one strand. Under three strands, over one strand. And what I'm going to do is create this eyelet. I'm making these eyelets you know, on the face of the paddle, the one that would look directly at you, and also on the left and right side of the paddle. So that way, once again, it's going to be my eyelet to create the chain link. Now what I'm, you're looking at is the chain link that we're trying to get. What I like to do is just like a pair of shoes, using my fids with this two and a half foot section of yellow paracord, I will lace it back and forth. And as you can see through the pictures, I lace them back and forth, pulling them tight between each, each pass. So that way it creates this chain link effect that you're looking at. Now that you've got the chain link done, you need to make something to hang it on the wall with because people are going to want to display this. Well, what I do using my fids, I just weave a small loop right in the back of it over and under a couple of the strands. At this point, what I'm going to do is put on a Turk's head. No, I'm not going to show you how to do it, but if you search on YouTube, there's people a lot better than me that will be able to show you how to do it like I did, although you want to make sure you don't forget to trim all your excess off. And also, this is a point at which I used that bailing wire that I showed you at the beginning to make sure everything was nice and tight and didn't move for me while I was putting on the Turk's head. Now this is what the paddle is supposed to look like when it's done. At the top, I have a rank insignia, and then on the bottom of the paddle, I have a warfare device and also some plastic that I cut out and then I fire polished the edges. Uh, this picture uh, is elevated about a half inch away from the paddle on some aluminum tubing and then I drilled and screwed in these stainless steel screws to hold it in place. What you see here is another type of weave on the paddle handle. It's a different style. I'm doing both. If you're interested in that one, let me know. Put it in the comments. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, tell me what you didn't like about it. Maybe I can change it in the next one. Oh, heck, I almost forgot. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.